So today we are digging into our pharmacology books, our resources here, to learn a little bit more about aminoglycosides. So from a nursing perspective, what do we need to know when we are giving these medications to our patients? And I've got some fun tips coming up for you. And of course, stay till the end because we're going to have an NCLEX question to help you apply the learning in today's lesson. Welcome back, my name is Tammy and this is Nurse Minder and on this channel we do everything nursing. So if you're new here, consider subscribing below so that you get the next video when it's released. Okay, so when we're talking about aminoglycosides, we're actually focusing on the protein synthesis that's happening inside the cell. So let me give you an example in everyday life that might make sense. So I first want to just share with you how aminoglycosides work and I'm going to share it with a story about Amy. Amy's in the photocopier room and what she's doing is she has a piece of paper that she's photocopying and she's creating exact duplicates of the original piece of paper. And now that's really what's happening inside of our cell when the proteins continue to replicate so that the cell can do its function, its job. It needs these proteins to do its job. And all of a sudden what happens is we have this bacteria come into the cell and gives her a different piece of paper to photocopy. So she does her job and she's photocopying. Well, this new piece of paper happens to be an illness and it's gonna cause harm to the body. Now, aminoglycosides come in and it's like a paper jam inside the photocopier. It halts the ability of the cell to continue to replicate this protein. And if we can't replicate the protein, then the cell can't do its job and it will eventually die. So first of all, let's identify what is an aminoglycoside. This is an easy category because the naming of the drugs, they all have a similar suffix. So the ending of the word ends in mycin. So we have gentamicin, streptomycin, tobramycin, neomycin, and amikacin, where you see that the mycin is in the word. It's just separated a little bit. Now I put them in this order for a reason. And I want you to think of ants when it comes to aminoglycosides because ants are small and when they bite, they cause itchy rashes. And that is one of the side effects of aminoglycosides is that they can have a hypersensitivity to the drug and end up developing a rash. Now, in terms of ants, what do we wanna do? We wanna get rid of them, so we are gonna step on them, okay? So these are some of the diagnoses you might see when it comes to my patients on an aminoglycoside, why do they have it? So do they have a staph aureus infection? Do they have tuberculosis and this is being used in combination with other drugs to treat it? Is it E. coli, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, sorry. So step on the ants is aminoglycosides, okay? Plus we also have the Klebsiella pneumonias as well here. Now let's get into a really cool way to remember a few more things about aminoglycosides. First of all, I've got the no in a box here, and that's for several reasons. These diagnoses all have something in common. Gram-negative bacteria. And so that's the first hint that you can use the word. I love it when a word gives me clues as to what it does. I mean, no glycosides. No means gram negative, so this would not be, you would not see aminoglycoside to treat a gram positive illness, okay? So gram negative. Now the other things that we can use the word no for are to help us identify side effects. N-O. There are black label warnings for these drugs because they have been known to create nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity. And if a, a pregnant mom, so you don't want to be giving these in pregnancy either, either so no pregnancy. Nephrotoxic, autotoxic, no pregnancy, gram negative medication. Don't you love a word that gives you all these clues? Now, another no is that they are typically not given orally, so not orally. However, I'm going to just put a little star here beside the neo. Neo doesn't like the word no, so <laughs> this is how I remember neo. Neo can also be given orally, okay? But generally, they are given intramuscularly, intravenously, and again, the word amino has the clues in it. So, I am intramuscularly, I am intravascularly. And then of course, 
occasionally orally and ophthalm ophthalmic. They can be given as drops and topical. All right, so amino is given a lot of clues as to how these drugs are given. Now, one of the most important things that this word gives us is how it works. No protein synthesis. That's the photocopy jam in the photocopier with Amy. All right, so here we have Amy working in the photocopier room and all of a sudden she gets a jam because there is no more protein synthesis. This is the mechanism of action as to how aminoglycosides work inside the cell. They halt protein synthesis, which means the cell cannot function and the cell will die. We know that these will only work in gram-negative bacteria, so Staph aureus, we're going to step on these ones, Staph aureus, tuberculosis, E. coli, Pseudomonas, Arginosa, and then of course we're adding Klebsiella pneumonia. That's one you have to add to your step. Uh, we also know that it is going to cause nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity, major side effects to watch for, and because we have these ants over here, we know that they can cause a rash as well, so big one to know. Pretty easy, right? Let's get on to our NCLEX question. Okay, question number one. Be sure to pause this after the question is read, consider the answers, and then return to us. Your patient has a history of cystic fibrosis and is now being treated for a new diagnosis of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Which medication do you anticipate will be ordered? Amikacin, gentamicin, streptomycin, or tobramycin. Go ahead and pause this video. Okay. Now you may have paused this video and gone back to check this out because this was a bonus piece of information I snuck in there and the answer would be tobramycin. Let's go on to quiz number two. All right, in this question, your patient is diagnosed with E. coli and prescribed amikacin 250 milligrams IV twice a day and they received his first dose last evening. Today he complains of hearing loss. Which medication on his profile is most likely to increase the risk of autotoxicity? furosemide, metformin, acetaminophen, or ranitidine. Go ahead and pause this video, make your selection. Okay, you ready? So the answer here would be furosemide. Furosemide is a loop diuretic, and in the video we talked about how diuretics given with aminoglycosides can increase the risk for nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you stay connected with me so that you get the notification when the next video is released. Bell, like, and of course share this with your friends. There's a lot of ways in which we can help each other through nursing school and nursing practice. And learning these quick little mnemonics and tips and tricks really help to expedite our process. Um, all right, also let me know in the comments below if this has been helpful. If you have any other mnemonics that you use, share that below because obviously we're stronger together when we combine our knowledge and our wisdom and experience. We'll see you in the next video. Hey, I know you're probably not ready to get off your phone or go back to work just yet or maybe even turn the lights off to go to sleep. So why don't you spend a little bit more time here watching another video. A mad scientist today, which way is my hair going?